Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello to you on a Tuesday. Hello to you on a Wednesday. Wherever you know are in the world, welcome to the very first 2019 VidIQ live stream. And today we're going to set some goals for you. Let's do this. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the regular live streams from vidIQ. My name is Rob. It is an honor to see you today. And as always, thank you very much for taking time out of your valuable day and spending it with not only myself, but with our resident YouTube expert, skateboarder, geek, nerd, self -pro, uh, self-proclaimed old guy of YouTube, Jeremy Vest. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Welcome back to the vidIQ audience. What have you got to tell us uh, that you've been up to over the last couple of weeks, uh, spending a bit of uh, time relaxing over the festive period? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it can be a crazy world out there, but we're all back ready to rock and roll in 2019, as all you are in the live stream. So, some shout outs to begin with. Hello to Lone Leak, uh, everybody, everything, Puf, Proof Beauty, uh, Bang Channels, Diswari, Game Pro Brothers, Depression Talks with Emmanuel. Thank you for joining us once again. You always post comments in our uh, videos, and congratulations on cracking, I think, recently 5,000 subscribers. Panther, oh, hello, we've been told there's no audio. Oh, Jeremy's got no audio. Uh, okay, well, maybe I'll have to try and fix that. So, folks, you're saying that Jeremy doesn't have any audio. Okay, uh, that is probably a fault on my side. Let's see what I can do to fix that. Jeremy, just start talking for a second. And then just do that again. Okay. Okay, so Jeremy is talking, but we're not getting any audio from him. It's one of these very frustrating things with live streams. We always have technical issues when we first start with our live stream. So I'm just going to try and fix this uh, on the fly here, folks. Jeremy is going to have to uh, mime or meme or whatever, talk, uh, do sign language if he can to uh, as we do the first bit of a live stream. I wonder if it's a problem at my end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn off my own ref. So, folks, bear with me one second here uh no that's not gonna work because we can't do that let's see what else we can do uh that's muted okay <laughs> how frustrating is this folks uh jeremy just talk again let's see if we can get this working <laughs> he we can still not hear you because it's not coming through on my audio so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the properties of my desktop audio and see if we can get that fixed uh no, it's not that one as always, folks, live streaming is a wonderful experience. I always recommend it. Uh, you have a wonderful experience uh, with all of these technical issues. And uh, I seem to have lost my options to change audio. So this is awesome. Jeremy, I think what you may want to do here is uh, just maybe leave the uh, Zoom chat and maybe uh, come back in. Because I can hear you fine. I can feel you absolutely fine. But for some reason, it's not coming through uh, on our audio here. So we're going to try and fix that in a second, folks. If if we can't hear Jeremy uh, in this uh, live stream, then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give him the day off. Uh, because if we can't hear him, then it's not going to be much use to you, uh, folks on the live stream but I'm just going to try and see uh, where we can get this working uh, it's this one here but it's locked okay Jeremy is rejoining now host and guest Jeremy Vest there okay Jeremy say something and please can we hear you <laughs> he is so enthusiastic and yet we still cannot hear him uh, for some bizarre reason uh, let's see what I uh, I, it could be, it could be that I uh, could maybe have to reboot, but yeah, for some reason, Jeremy Vest is not coming through on my audio. So what am I going to do? I'm going to try. I'm going to try and turn my earphones off here. We're gonna, I'm determined to get this working. All right, I've turned off my microphone. So hopefully, when Jeremy rejoins here, uh, we may get something uh, working. I'm going to just try and jiggle about a little bit more with my properties. We're going to go with the speakers. All right, Jeremy, hopefully he's going to rejoin in a second. And then we'll have him here, folks. And don't worry, folks, we'll give you some time at the end of this live stream to catch up with any issues. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, he's going to rejoin. I'm just going to send him a message to try now. 
We'll see if we can get his audio working. And if it does work, then... Okay, Jeremy, try now. I st we still cannot hear you. I do not fathom what is going on. I think for the time being, Jeremy, we're going to have to give you the uh, week off. So, Jeremy, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. We will endeavour to try and get these audio issues fixed next week. It's just one of those things. We're coming back after 2019, and my computer has decided that none of us want to listen to Jeremy this week. So, Jeremy, uh, all the best, and we'll see you next week. So, if Jeremy departs, uh, it is yours truly now on the live stream, but uh, fortunately, I am the one who puts all of this show together, uh, so you are going to be spending some quality time with just myself here on the live stream this week. Uh, the, the, the microphone is plugged in as people are talking about it, uh, uh, because I could hear him fine, but uh, when you put it on the live stream, there's lots of different audio um, signals that come in, and for some reason, it just wasn't coming in on that uh, t uh, effort. Uh, I'm going to try one more time. We're going to try just one more time, because hopefully uh, this time I think I may have fixed it by just realizing that I'm on the live wrong stream. Uh, so my recommendation to you folks is if you do want a live stream, don't bother it's an absolute nightmare and causes so many catastrophes uh, with everything that goes on with it. I'm just waiting for Jeremy to join one more time. In the meantime, what I want to start, what I want to do to start with this live stream, we will be doing channel audits, of course, uh, later on in the show. The first thing I wanted to talk about is uh, goal setting. So, uh, Jeremy, are you rejoining us here? Can you hear us, Jeremy? I think you rejoined, but I can't see you. Right, try now, Jeremy. No, it's still not working. Disappear. Go away. Okay. That's it. We're done with Jeremy. Uh, thanks for his uh, 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 joining here. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to talk about goal setting. Folks, and what I want you to do in the next five to ten minutes is I want you to tell me what your goals are on YouTube in 2019. If you haven't thought of one now... Think of uh, a reasonable target uh, for your channel. In 2019, what I want to try and achieve here at vidIQ is we got around about 7 million views last year. We're aiming for between 8 and 12 million views this year. We got around about 13 million minutes of watch time. We want to aim for between 15 and 20 million, million minutes of watch time. And we got uh, 135,000 subscribers next, last year. This year, we want to try and get 150 to 200,000 subscribers. So thank you, folks, for uh, contribution here in the live stream. We've got uh, Tycho Reacts, who wants to try and achieve the ambitious target of 1 million subscribers. A more modest uh, target here is Kylie's Big Pig, 100 subscribers in 2019. Uh, wow, there's so many people coming in here with here with the targets. iFusion Z wants to hit 15,000 subscribers, hopefully. Panther with 100,000 subscribers. X Speed Racer X4, 150 subs in 2019. So you're all different channels aiming for different targets, and that's really commendable, and it's awesome that you want to try and achieve those targets. A very typical one here is the um, target from Teclin, who wants to reach 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. And why do you want to do that, of course? To reach your monetization goals. Although, just looking at your uh, channel tackling, you do a lot of memes, so you may fall under the trap of uh, fair use and uh, duplicated content. So do bear that in mind. That's one of the channels that hopefully we're going to be auditing today. Candice L, looking for 100 subs in 2019. Brolic Whiskey, aiming to hit 10,000. You're all aiming for subscriber numbers here. Is there anyone wanting to hit a certain number of views or watch time? Because those are also very important. There might be a lot of people following your content, but if nobody watches it, uh, then that could be a issue. Uh, Ren, I'm uh, not sure how to pronounce your surname, uh, your username. It's Ren SN, 500 subscribers by 2020. You could easily do that in two years. Aim a bit higher, I think, there. Uh, tech Mods, you want to hit 1 million views this month. Uh, what are you currently on? Do let us know. Uh, good guy Kaiser, your goals are to reach 100,000 subscribers. So lots of people aiming for lots of different things, and that is very commendable, and it's great to set goals for 2019. 
Now, we got a nice little segue here because we want to help you try and reach those goals with vidIQ. And to do that, we've got a brand new tool that we want to show you. Uh, we're very proud to be launching right now a tool called, uh, let me just get Jeremy's screen off there. I'm just going to close down the meeting there. We've got, a, we've got a very cool new tool and it's completely free for all vidIQ users. So if you're in this live stream, but you aren't currently a vidIQ user, download it from the Chrome extension now. It's completely free. And what you'll find here on the left-hand side are lots of awesome tools. And we've shown you all of these before, like the uh, channel audit, which gives you a snapshot of your channel uh, in seconds and uh, most viewed, finding out what's really trending on YouTube. But today I want to talk about briefly the achievements button. So what I'm going to do here is click on the achievements section and it's very quickly going to load up a load of analytics for our channel. So it's telling us these are our key, key achievements. In approximately a single day, we're going to hit 150,000 likes on our channel. So over the course of six years of vidIQ being a YouTube channel, people have clicked that button 150,000 times, which is incredible. Uh, and we are going to want to celebrate that. Just going down some of our other key achievements, we have six of them primarily. 250,000 subscribers. Yes, we hit that target. We're a quarter of a way to a million subscribers. And we did that on, uh, let's see, we did that on December the 18th. So a fantastic achievement. And it looks like we're on pace, as you can see here, to hit 300,000 subscribers at the beginning of April. We hit 8 million views on the channel. We've uploaded 300 videos, well on the way to 400. So it's all of these milestones that we hit recently. So we talk about getting a silver play button. I'm not sure if there is one behind me, a silver play button right here. That's the first gift that YouTube gives to you after 100,000 subscribers. But we want to celebrate a lot more with our vidIQ community. So you'll be hitting achievements at like 10 subscribers, 100 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers, uh, stepping up those achievements as your channel becomes more successful. And one of the awesome things about any of these analytics is you can share it on uh, social media uh, with a simple click of a button. So I'm going to click here. We've got 650,000 um, uh, comments, which is incredible. How all of these comments we're creating through now, we've got hundreds of comments here. All we need to do is click on the button. It generates a certificate, and then we can click on the Twitter button here, and this will instantly share it to Twitter as a post that we've uh, hit 650,000 comments on our channel. And we really do appreciate everybody, including you, our awesome, integral, uh, deep to the chest, to the, to the bosom of our vidIQ community, all of you who join us every um, week on our live stream. So, yeah, that is the... Um, uh, the key achievements tool that we have here at vidIQ, as I say, absolutely free for you to download right now on our uh, Chrome extension. There's a link in the description, so do check it out. Uh, yeah, so people are asking, that when do you get the bronze play button? So what should the bronze play button be? Uh, an interesting question as we talk about achievements. A bronze play button, I would I guess, would be like 10,000 subscribers. Uh, yes, Brolic Whiskey, that's pretty cool, and it's free to use uh, straight away. Actually, I've just remembered there's some more stuff I can show you here. I've only shown you about 50% uh, of a tool because we've got the key achievements here. You scroll down, and it gives you your top performing months as well. So not only channel totals, but in December, we had an incredible month. We broke loads of records on our channel. Uh, for example, we got uh, 18,000 subscribers, two and a half million views. Uh, we got fif uh, nearly 50,000 likes. All of those uh, achievements in December, which was incredible. You can share any of these. And uh, we also look at the progress bar as well. So in terms of uh, how are we doing this month? Well, let's be honest, December was a pretty incredible month for us. And we were well on the way to uh, 12,000 subscribers by December the 9th. As for January the 8th, we're a little behind that because um, we're just getting back into the swing of things in terms of uh, building the channel and creating content. So uh, work to be done, of course, but 2019, we're really going to push hard. So yeah, you can look at top performing uh, videos, uh, top performing months there for your channel on achievements. And finally at the bottom, this is one that we want you to help us build. 
top performing content on your channel. We've just got one at the moment, which is most views from a video on your channel. And that is one about uh, how Mr. Beast has been really intelligent in the PewDiePie vs. T series. Uh, series uh, saga that's still ongoing 950,000 views there on that video but what else should we add on this section maybe we could add uh, one which is most minutes watched on a video for our channel we'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments here uh, so yeah that would be fantastic like genie's he's here saying your most viewed videos 290,000 um, views you're hoping to hit 300,000 uh, soon so yeah I mean that'd be a perfect opportunity here to check your achievements and see which is uh, your best performing uh, content so that is the um, the achievements tool on vidIQ so do check it out we'd love to hear your thoughts and comments uh, on that tool as you start to use it. A couple of suggestions coming in here, like highest user interaction. So yeah, we could have a metric which has the videos with the most likes or the highest likes to dislikes ratio might be a good one as well. People are saying Walmart in the comments. I have no idea what that means, so do let me know. Uh, also, I want to say hello to your real estate whisperer, uh, one of the moderators here at vidIQ. Always appreciate your support and uh, checking that the, the content is clean and the comments are good and there's a, uh, a real uh, community feeling uh, here in the chat. All right. So we took a little longer there to show you the achievements tool uh, because of those technical glitches that we had at the beginning. We've lost Jeremy, but we're still going to push on here uh, with the uh, channel audits. We know that's what you always like to see. So if you're ready, folks, let's do this. We're going to do some channel audits right now. Oh, uh, you know, I spent so long putting together those transitions and I... Half the time I forget to use them, but today I've remembered. And um, we are going to look at our first channel of 2019 here, which is, and of course, don't forget, Jeremy Vest uh, is not here on the live stream today uh, due to audio technical issues. Uh, to the channel we are looking at first is Build Your Wealth, uh, True Financials. You have over 5,000 subscribers, so already an excellent uh, start to uh, the channel here. And I can see that you are predominantly uh, a channel about uh, financial in terms of budget planning. You had a budget report in December, household budgets. Uh, so I think definitely one of the key, um, key one of the keywords for you would be uh, budgeting, budget planning, and you're certainly using that in your titles, which is good. I think one of the things I would say, just looking at the channel to begin with, is that your thumbnails are really strong, and you've got a good template here of having you in the. Uh, thumbnail as the hero of the content. You've got this green theme running throughout many of your videos, but you transition it to red for live streams, and I can understand where you're going with that. There's always that YouTuber look and pose which you've got, and you try and occasionally include some other objects in your thumbnails, which is good. Maybe with this budget one here, it's a little difficult to see this budget uh, as a Excel spreadsheet, so you might want to use an icon instead or something simpler, uh, because obviously when the thumbnail is shrunk down to this size, you have these problems of being able to pick out what is in the thumbnail. What I would say is that the thumbnails are good, um, and you probably want to just update your channel banner as well, because the, the font here is a little different on the banner. So I think there's improvements to be made. I think your thumbnails are fantastic. The, the banner maybe is a little out of date. It could be updated a little bit. Uh, but I like that you have basically a value proposition when you post videos. Be aware that you have here a, an achievement. So like a 20, uh, an awesome achievement here that you're uh, rated one of the best personal finance and investing YouTube channels uh, by a... A, a site here, but that will be chopped off on mobile devices. You've got to remember uh, that when you are on a mobile device, you've brought your margins are probably about here. You may have done that on purpose because it still works on a mobile device, but if you want to bring that credibility of the YouTube best YouTube channels into your middle of the banners, then maybe that's something else to uh, consider. I think that the channel is generally good. You're hitting some trending topics as well, like January budget planning. So that's definitely a, a good idea uh, for trending content that you have there. 
I'm just going to sort by most popular. Do you have any uh, outstanding uh, videos that you could maybe double down on? So one's here about how to pay off debt. You've got 30,000 views. Is that something that you could capitalize on with maybe more content? I'm not sure if you did that. Paying off a mortgage. That seems to be like an awesome video for you, bringing in a lot of traffic. And a little different as well in the text and font. I don't know. Maybe people in the comments could uh, say whether it looks better like this or the uh, new method, but still relatively consistent with your branding. Did you uh, follow up on that content about maybe more ideas for paying off a mortgage uh, you could have used there? So, But I think generally for a channel that is about a, quite a niche topic, you're very focused. You know exactly what you want. Your audience probably knows what you uh, want. Uh, so continue to do what you're doing. I think generally a couple of checks are using the community tab, USUR, which is brilliant. Uh, how is your about section? That seems to be well filled out. So you joined in May of 2017, still a relatively young channel, and you've got just over 300,000 uh, views, which is awesome. So what are your targets, True Financials, this year? I would say if you could maybe crack 10,000 subscribers and maybe... Ooh, maybe 750,000 views, like basically double your channel, 100% growth in 2019. That would be superb. And of course, with your content, you want to be leveraging your services, your skills and your products and trying to earn uh, income beyond AdSense as well. There. So a great start, a good template for many YouTubers here uh, from True Financials. The next channel we are going to look at here is Inverted Popes ambient music you're about to hit 150 subscribers so congratulations on that i'm just checking that your channel is over two years old you've got over 15,000 views so a channel that's established itself looking at the brand consistencies here what i would say is that your channel banner is about ambient music which is great um, but when I look at your thumbnails, the most recent ones, there don't seem to be that much content on ambient music. It seems to be reviews on, uh, I guess, music boards, sound boards. Sorry, I have know nothing about this area. So if I'm using the wrong terminology, I do apologize. And then the, the, the screenshots, uh, I can see that they are these big, uh, big chunks of technology. I was going to say knobs and dials, and I'm thinking, is that appropriate? But yeah, absolutely. You may want to focus on a particular part of the soundboard, maybe, because uh, as they're zoomed out, it maybe just looks a bit jumbled and cluttered. And uh, so maybe some stronger thumbnails could be there. But does this represent a shift in your uh, content? Because it looks as if you're having a certain amount of success with these views on uh, the soundboards and music boards, uh, certainly, yeah. So your ambient music was getting, some of your ambient music was getting a few hundred views, which you, you have there. But yeah, going back to your sound, so again, all of these videos are about soundboards. So I think there's a definite shift and focus in your channel. Uh, it's a very niche area, and I think you maybe want to reflect that in your channel banner. Uh, maybe you want to change your, you could change your channel name or and, and the value proposition to reflect that. So a couple of things to consider there. I guess what would be the keywords of the type of content that you have? Let's see the most popular videos. Uh, so morgue board, is that how you pronounce it? That seems to be uh, your strongest keyword for your content. But you've not really had any breakthrough um, videos yet in this area. I think, like, for example, I think that's a, this is a really good thumbnail here because it has, adds a little bit of colour to it. And you could maybe include some text, like uh, something that's really important from the soundboard, whether it's, like, crisp quality or, uh, I don't know, like, functional or... Uh, uh, what how what whatever um, adjectives can you use to describe uh, the motherboards on your channel? Maybe think about that. So yeah, I think generally there seems to be a change in focus on your content. So maybe uh, just reflect that in in the the type of uh, graphics that you're using on your channel. So that's inverted popes. Moving on to the next channel. Well, this chap does look familiar. It's woodworking skills for everybody doing it with Jason. And uh, we know of uh, Jason. He's helped us out at a couple of conferences. 
And he's uh, submitted his channel for review. 8,000 subscribers. I'm liking the diversity of channels that we've had so far. Uh, it's very clear what this channel is about because of the channel branding, which is very clear. You've got a, an animated face there, which is good. Woodworking skills for everybody, so it's a very accessible channel. Uh, what I will say, Jason, is that you haven't posted uh, many videos recently. It looks as if you've taken a break, perhaps, over the festive period. And you st your posting schedule tended to fall off uh, in uh, the, the last couple of months, I guess, from three months ago. Uh, but you, the thumbnails are over generally high quality which is good, and I think you're always st sticking to your topics, which seems to be uh, like sanding of wood and that type of content. I mean, yeah, if you just scroll down here, the if, if we look here at the thumbnails from like a, a year ago, a couple of months ago, they, they were all over the place. So there's no real focus and style, but it looks as if there's been a, a definite improvement here. Still maybe a bit of a mixing about with the fonts and maybe a, a lack of consistency perhaps in the color. I guess the, the color theme is... Uh, brownish uh, hues and orange hues of woodwork. How can you bring that more into your uh, content? I, I seem to remember you were saying somewhere that, although you've not posted any comment, uh, content recently, you have a video that's doing really well in terms of um, bringing in new views. Is it this one about how to stain wood or how to distress wood? It looks as if the, your most uh, successful videos are how to... Uh, manipulate wood in some way. So there's like a verb in there somewhere. How to distress wood, how to metal inlay in wood, how to quickly distress wood. Uh, distress seems to be a very common word in your content. So maybe in terms of, you know, getting back into the swing of things, if you want to create more content in 2019, focusing on this how to, how to do something with wood is a, a successful area. Maybe you want to create a video series on that uh, for the next couple of videos. Are you using the community tab? You haven't used it for a, a little while, so maybe get back into that if you can. And are you uh, correct? Are you putting in the correct uh, playlist? It looks as if you are, and thank you very much for liking our live stream. Uh, that is very much appreciated there. So that's doing it with Jason. I think get back into a swing of things and uh, I would say the focus should be on how to do different things with wood. That seems to be your most successful videos on the channel. All right. I wanted to look at this channel because look at the start date. Deadly Roger. Is that how you pronounce your channel name? Uh, you started on the 6th of January 2019. So here we are, folks. A blank canvas of a channel, a brand new channel. Welcome to YouTube. We're saying that uh, it's never too late to start a YouTube channel. This is your opportunity. And already in what, two days, 48 hours, you have nine subscribers and 23 views. So just congratulations on having people watch your content. Nine subscribers, that's a queue waiting to get on a bus. You've already got that many subscribers, which is brilliant. But how can we improve the channel? Folks, if you want to suggest uh, some ideas in the uh, comments, by all means. Uh, I, I'm, not really so, I'm not really sure what it's about other than looking at the video titles. It looks as if it's about Fortnite. If it's about Fortnite, a very competitive area. So you want to decide where you can best help or entertain people with Fortnite content which hasn't been done before. That might be with new season stuff or secrets that you've found that nobody else has found. And so, yeah, really spend, I guess, the next week or two uh, brainstorming uh, lots of ideas for video content that no one else has done on Fortnite. I mean, you've done one here, Fortnite Season 7, download it now, and you got like 25 views from that, which is awesome work. The next one... Uh, all Fortnite Battle Royale updates, Season 1 to Season 7. So that's an interesting one. Uh, I, I like the idea of that, but it probably needs maybe a bit of a stronger thumbnail. Uh, as it stands, these people are sort of disappearing into the thumbnail a little bit. So it might require some text on maybe like a, a the most popular weapon or item from one of the seasons could help you with the thumbnails there. I'm guessing you haven't done too much with the other parts of our cha channel yet, but obviously you want to have an about section. You've already got two videos. You could start to put them in a playlist. But I, yeah, I just want to welcome you, Deadly Roger, Rojan, whatever, however your channel name is pronounced, welcome you to uh, 
the wonderful experience that is a um, YouTube uh, channel and a best of luck uh, with it there. Uh, awesome. We've got a, a super chat here. Thank you very much to Andre uh, Rako Tumalala. Have I pronounced your name right there? I do hope so. Uh, you use vidIQ. Thank you very much for all the help your channel does. Would it be possible to add me for a review? Uh, so if you have submitted your channel uh, and it's on the list, uh, I will uh, uh, include it if I can. Uh, but just let you know that Super Chats do not influence whether or not we uh, review a channel. This is not done financially. We don't want to restrict it to people who can afford a channel review in this live stream. Uh, the key recommendation for you and every single person watching watching this live stream is that uh, when I set the live stream live each week about an hour before, uh, that's when I remove last week's channel submissions because I want people to be in the live stream when I do the channel review. So that's the best time to add yourself to the list uh, for channel review. It's like a, an hour to half an hour before, fill out a form and that's when we can take a look at your channel. All right. What we're going to do now is take a question of the week, uh, which is going to be a little strange because it's on a screen with Jeremy, but Jeremy's not here. But I, uh, we look at comments throughout the year, uh, sorry, throughout the week on our YouTube channel, and we like to tackle eat one uh, each week. Uh, later on in this live stream, I'm going to do any questions answered asked, so you can ask a question in the live stream, and I will endeavour to do my best to answer it. But the question that's come through from our audience on the YouTube channel this week comes uh, from Chromax, and I really want everybody to help out here with suggestions about basically uh, free editing software, video editing software, on the PC, and specifically, this would be a video editing software that doesn't leave a watermark in one of the corners of your videos. Uh, you can me get many free trials, but it obviously maybe has a time limit on the video editing, or it leaves a horrible watermark of which software you're using. I mean, to start off with, the very simplest editor you can use, and I use this for a, a couple of uh, years, really, before I moved to Camtasia, which is what I use now. The one that you uh, you can use is Windows Movie Maker. It really is quite capable. If you can get the older version, I used to prefer that, Windows Movie Maker 2.6. It is still one of the fastest programs for editing quick videos uh, that I've ever used. But we've got some uh, suggestions coming in now. Uh, Film Mora is one that you can uh, potentially use, but we do not encourage uh, people uh, getting it uh, legally. But Peddling with Paul recommends Movie Maker as well. Uh, Alex uh, Cameo Plays Games, Hit Film Express is there a free version of that. Uh, do let us know. Brolit Whiskey says, uh, Phil Moore, it's not free, but it costs $60 for a lifetime subscription and uses very little system resources. So, yeah, th this may be, of course, if you're uh, making videos, uh, the first investment should be audio, camera, and certainly a video editor because those are the things that you're using uh, every single day. Uh, what uh, any other suggestions? We've got Blender or Hit Film that have come come in there. Uh, some and Brolic Whiskey saying uh, Movie Maker is trash compared to Filmora. That is true, but I think M Movie Maker is free, so at least you can use that without spending any money. Uh, Sony Vegas Pro is on offer on stream, so uh, some uh, maybe some New Year deals that you can get here. But yeah, thanks for the suggestions. Hit Hit Film is free. Uh, Final Cut Pro X, I think that's a one time purchase. Uh, great support if you're on a Mac, of course. Uh, some people are saying that they couldn't figure out hit film, so maybe it is a um, so maybe it is a, a bit of a complicated program to use. But yeah, thank you for all of these suggestions. And uh, if there is a thirty day free trial with Camtasia. That's the one I use, and I think that that is a one off payment, but it's around about two hundred dollars. But uh, I use it very much. Power Director. So all sorts of suggestions coming in there for Chromax, and I'm sure all of you here on the live stream are, are hopefully taking some good suggestions here. Right, folks, what we're going to do here is take a quick break. And when I get back, we're going to be looking at some more channel audits uh, for you. So stick around and we'll be back oof, in around about two or three minutes. Bye for now.
Alrighty, we are back, minus Jeremy, who I'm sure is absolutely devastated that he's getting a week off because of the uh, earlier technical issues. Do apologize for that. I'm going to work tirelessly to try and get that working for everybody uh, next week on the live stream. Uh, but you know what, folks? Let's just get straight back into some more channel audits. Not, let's not stick around here. Uh, we've got you. You're busy. I'm busy. So let's try and help you with some more channel audits. This channel here, uh, Gam Gamit. Now, why do you have a completely blank channel banner? You've added a channel banner, or else that we wouldn't see anything at all here, but it's completely black. Is there a reason for this? Definitely an opportunity to sell what your channel is about, so uh, make sure uh, to include that uh, on... Whoops, just going to change some things here. Let's get that fixed. Okay, let's go back. Just I just saw a little graphic there in the bottom right-hand corner. So, yeah, uh, Gamut, what is the reason behind a completely black channel banner? It would be interesting to know. You have nearly a 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Your channel has over 250,000 views, which is awesome. Not sure what you mean by I can do anything on your channel description. Uh, so that might help again to just explain what your channel's about. Now, the interesting thing here is that I think, as I understand it, you do animations for a particular type of game, I think. And you have one video here, which has had, a, I guess, a viral moment. 200,000 views, which is absolutely awesome. I think what you should, do, should have done with that video is double down on it. You should have been using the same keywords, maybe the same thumbnail, so people know that it's a similar sort of topic and, and, and done something of a similar nature. Uh, because as we see, when, when you switch to something else, the view counts are, are well down. But in saying that, for a channel with a thousand subscribers, each video is getting more uh, views and subscribers, which is awesome. That means YouTube is promoting your content well beyond your uh, current subscriber base, which is fantastic. So in terms of the content and in terms of the, what, what you're targeting, continue to do that. But just think again about how this thumbnail was really impactful and perhaps the uh, the title that you use. I don't know anything about this game, so I don't know what the keywords here are, but it looks as if this video really did well with your audience. I mean, looking at 7,000 likes, it's probably got, what, 2,000 comments. So people loved this one. How can you help uh, leverage that? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing here, it doesn't look as if you use any interactive cards. So you may want to put some interactive cards on this video as well to push people to more of your content because it's probably still evergreen. Do you use end screens? I don't think you do. So there's an opportunity to add end screens to this video. This is, this is like your flagship uh, statement piece that has done awesome for your channel. How can you use that to sell the rest of your content? I think that's definitely where you should start uh, with your channel. So yeah, fix the channel banner, uh, make uh, help people to understand what your channel is about and double down on this particular video, this uh, rail C blocks away video. See if you can do something of a very similar nature on that topic on the game, if it's all about the same game. You have to, uh, uh, something that you have to appreciate is that when people visit your channel for the first time, such as myself, who's completely new to it, I don't know how these game, how these thumbnails and how these, how these titles fit together. So there may be a common ground keyword uh, that you can use there, whether it's from the, the game itself, the game title, something certainly to uh, include. For, for example, Susie is sick and tired of it all. That includes no keywords at all, probably on the video game that you're covering. So that certainly needs a bit more help and description uh, in there. But you're obviously doing something awesomely well because you have relatively short videos, but they're still absolutely kicking ass. So uh, congratulations on your success fair. 2019 goals. I don't know, maybe you could aim for 5,000 subscribers, hit a million views. Yeah, that's the sort of potential your channel uh, has. Moving on to one of my favorite subjects, as you can see uh, from the uh, WWF WWE titles behind you. We're talking about Squared Circle here, a wrestling channel which has cracked 1,000 subscribers. Congratulations to you. 60,000 views. So you're probably uh, heading towards a monetization mark there. Uh, so it's uh, it's psych so I'm not sure what psycho babble means around squared circle. Is there something that you can maybe add as your value proposition? It's about wrestling, but what type of wrestling is it about? It looks as if it's about all types of wrestling, not just the the big brand of WWF or E. So you can maybe include that. 
I guess uh, the question is, uh, in this case, is how can you distinguish yourself from the rest of the competition? Because there are a lot of wrestling channels on YouTube who do similar content, uh, especially looking at the thumbnail. So how can you perhaps uh, leverage that to your advantage? Uh, it's a podcast. Uh, okay, so you're, you have audio content. It looks like that you're putting onto YouTube, which is absolutely fine. You, you've got very strong uh, thumbnails to do that. I'm just going to quickly click into a video and see if you have any graphics. Okay, so you do you do include a film on there, which is absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic. It gives uh, the viewing audience something to look at there, which I think is very commendable. Thumbnails are very strong, uh, very typical of uh, the strong uh, YouTube uh wrestling channels and it looks as if you've had some a recent breakthrough with tackling a i know a trending topic there's a new wrestling brand that's potentially coming along to compete with wwe this all elite wrestling and you've had some success there so i say definitely double down on that news content if you can because that's working for you as for the wwe content look you're getting hundreds of views maybe cracking um 500 views occasionally but that seems like a much more difficult area to break into, obviously. So yeah, by all means, keep the WWE content in there. But if you can double down with the All Elite Wrestling, which is probably a very strong keyword for you right now, uh, definitely take a look there. So congratulations on your recent success, as we can see. And uh, yeah, so 30,000. So this is how interesting it is. When you talk about All Elite Elite Wrestling, 40,000 views, 6,000 views, 3,000 views. When you talk about WWE, you're back down into the hundreds. So maybe you want to position yourself as the premier channel for all Elite Wrestling content while it's hot. I think that's definitely the way to go forward in 2019. Good luck with your channel. Uh, and as uh, we always say, do you smell what vidIQ is cooking? Uh, no, because it's in a microwave and we uh, don't know how to use a cooker. I made that up completely on the spot. Next channel, Gustavo's Videos. 50 subscribers, relatively new channel because you don't have that many videos. The interesting thing I noticed when I looked at this channel was that... This banner looks almost like a video game, almost maybe like something from Just Cause or uh, Fortnite uh, in terms of the way it graphically looks. But when I look at your content, it looks as if it's about traveling, perhaps, and droning, possibly. Well, there's one drone video, but it looks more like a travel vlog. So I think definitely you should be uh, maybe thinking about how can you position your value proposition a little bit differently. I like the fact that you're telling people exactly when you post videos. Uh, that is good. Um, but yeah, I guess what's the channel about? It, it looks as if it's about uh, a vlog basically uh, you've got the hawaiian files and it includes some traveling maybe yeah I'm, I'm just not sure what your channel is about looking at your thumbnails and your content it looks to be travel vlogs and reviews and other crazy things so yeah as a small channel it looks as if you're trying to find your place on youtube which can always be a very difficult thing to do uh, in the beginning so i would look at what your most popular videos are so far that seems to be one about a video editor, one about a pizza ATM, so maybe unusual quirky things that you've discovered. Uh, that may be where you uh, can go. I think at the, uh, for the time being, though, because again, looking at your channel, you didn't post anything for about five months, and then you said you're back after four months. So again, trying to find where you are, and you've lost some traction. I think consistency and uh, learning how to post videos on a regular basis is certainly uh, where you want to be focusing uh, your channel in the next couple of weeks. And uh, good luck to you in 2019. Next channel, then, we are looking at is the Game Pro Brothers, starting to move into the gaming uh, side of channel audits here. Nearly 2,000 subscribers. Congratulations on your success there. Don't forget to share it with the achievements tool when you hit 2,000 subscribers. I love your channel banner. In, it shows the two heroes animated, uh, some game references in the background, new videos. Well, you post new videos on a very regular basis, Monday to Friday, uh, which is fantastic. I guess the question I would ask here is, as I look through your content, uh, if we look at the last 10 videos, you've got videos on the Blackout Club, Contra, uh, Hunt Showdown, is that a game? Resident Evil 6, uh, the Capcom Beat'em Up Bundle, 
uh, Ashen. So you're jumping through all these different videos, uh, games. The question I have to you is, is your audience interested in all of these different games? Or will they want to follow one series from start to finish? That might be something you need to canvas your um, audience with, and you could do that perhaps with a community tab, which you are using. You posted very recently as well. But a question might be, hey folks, do you like? would you like us to do a walkthrough of a single game or many games at once because you're posting content on a regular basis? Thumbnails are, I guess, generally strong. You're using... Um, you're using... Uh, game imagery, which is generally fine, uh, I, but there is some, I, what you might call a wallpapering, where you just use the same thumbnail for a game series and you just change a number, and that's perhaps not enough in this day and age. It maybe needs to ch change it up a little bit and tell uh, a bit, tell the story of your content in your thumbnails. Uh, so that's something to certainly look at rather than just taking game imagery. But yeah, just as I look at this, uh, what, I'm being, what I'm being drawn to is the game, the game imagery, which is similar for like the Ashen one and just changing a number. And again, we talk about whether somebody new to your channel do they want to invest in your content if they see an episode number and think, oh, this is episode five? Do I have to start at the very beginning of this series to fully understand and appreciate it? So trying to make each video uh, stand up on its own is always a strength. And I guess another question is, uh, how trending are these video games? Are you hitting the right topics? Because it looks as if you're maybe struggling to get a bit of traction or keep your audience. Views are in like the double digits here where you have 2,000 subscribers. So that tells me that your audience is really, you're not really keeping your audience. So maybe come and subscribe for one thing and then you don't keep them there uh, for future content. So that's maybe something else to uh, consider. I, I think the, 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 the branding and the thumbnails are relatively strong, but maybe some uh, strategy and focus is required on the channel there. All right, folks, what we're going to do now is take any questions answered uh, by uh, me on this fine uh, Tuesday morning for me. Very quickly going to go into Tuesday afternoon here on the west coast of North America. But folks, if you have any questions that you want to ask, I'm going to try and answer as many as I can in the next five to 10 minutes before we do another round of channel audits. So if you've got a question about vidIQ, if you've got a question about YouTube, if you've got a question about me, fire away, and I'm gonna try and answer it as best I can, except for a question such as, uh, how old are you? I always try and keep that a secret just so that you can have a guess, and I always get entertained by the answers. Does vidIQ have a thumbnail A-B testing tool? That comes from Geezerscape. We do not currently have a A-B a testing tool for thumbnails. And it's a bit of... I know that other tools do this, but it's kind of, it, it is... It can be difficult to um, really test that uh, properly because you have an hour maybe where you're testing one thumbnail and then another hour where you're testing another thumbnail, but that can have such a massive effect on velocity. You need the thumbnails being shown to different people at the same time. And I think that's all one, of, one of the things that's been a bit of a struggle with how to do A-B testing on YouTube. To be honest, YouTube need to make this tool available uh, to users themselves and it'd be a much more effective. Uh, how do you convert viewers into subscribers? You produce good, consistent content on a regular basis that they come back to. On the first video, they may be intrigued by your content. By the second video, they maybe build some trust with you. By the third video, maybe they are convinced to um, subscribe to our channel. But that's only if, if you can get them interested in multiples of your content. And of course, don't forget uh, click-through um, calls to action, such as subscribing to the channel, which you can do uh, right here if you want to. VidIQ. Uh, what app or software can I use to make a good green screen background? As long as you've got a good green screen, you can use many tools. I've done it a lot with Camtasia, but any tool that has a chroma key effect should be able to do it relatively well. The important thing for a green screen is to make sure that it's consistently lit all the way around, other, 
because if you don't, you start to get uh, patches. VidIQ needs a dark mode when using YouTube in dark mode. Very good point. I think we are actually working on a dark mode for uh, vidIQ, so that should be available soon. That's a fantastic question. In fact, bear with me. I'm going to ask right now our developers and just check how far away we are with the dark mode. Uh, let's see if we can get an answer. I know we were working on this before Christmas, uh, so uh, I'm just going to see if I can get an update on that uh, for you. Hello, are we still here? Is there anything wrong? Are we down? I'm just getting some reports here that the... Uh, oh, are we getting some... Getting a lot of lagging here? I'm back. Hello? Yes. Uh, is Are people panicking? Can you get me back? Yeah, sorry, that must have been a drop. Yeah, so it looks as if I just had a drop in the internet for a second. Do apologize, but it looks as if we are back. Uh, okay, so sorry, what did I miss there? If you, uh, the, the chat was all just, he's gone, uh, panic, uh, where is he? Uh, so if you have a question, post it again, and I will try and uh, get back to you. Uh, so so how tall, I, tall am I? I'll answer that question. I am 5 foot 11, I think in new money, that's about 180 centimetres. How to, uh, um, question here for a men influencer. How to stand out in the oligopoly niche? I have no idea what that is, so I, I don't know if I could help you uh, with that. How much do you worry about your old content hurting you? This is a question from Boland's Happily Ever After. I used to make boring vlogs, but my unsubscribe rate is high. I feel like they find all videos and leave. Okay, well, the, reason, the way to find that out is to check your YouTube analytics and see if people are actually unsubscribing after watching our old content. I always think try and include all of the content and keep it there on your channel because it is a, it's almost like a diary, a journal, the journey of your content from where it was to where it is now. And it's fascinating for people to, if you get, if you become a big YouTuber, for people to, uh, see the development of your content. So I would never delete content unless there was a specific reason that was really harming your content or maybe you've changed your political point of view or something or if you really thought it was harming your content. But generally, I would say leave the content on your channel uh, and... Um, and get there. So we're just getting an update here. So dark mode is in the works, but it's just been put uh, in uh, in on ice for a, for a little while because we are working uh, to get vidIQ now in the beta studio. We're fairly confident that the beta studio is stable now, and YouTube are not going to make any radical changes. So we're starting to develop develop for that, and we should hopefully have some updates on. VidIQ being in the beta version of YouTube Analytics uh, very soon. So thanks for that question. Uh, we have got it on the list, and we're going to try and get it done uh, probably in early 2019. Question here so from your boy, Sam. Does that stop my money coming in revenue since it's delayed? I'm not sure what the question is there. Uh, it seems like the second part of the question, so maybe you want to ask that again if you can. In the achievements tab, I get a channel that does not exist error. How to fix it? Okay, 64-bit dragon, thank you for the feedback. If you're having a problem, do contact uh, support at vidiq.com. We would love to get this fixed for you. Uh, if there is an issue with it, do... Um, uh, it's best to contact help desk because it means that we can take a look at screenshots and we can get it fixed for you and everybody else who's having uh, that problem. On the achievements, I see it says four hours, but I know it took me more than a year. What does that mean? Does it mean that I need more watch time hours to get in review? I'm not entirely sure uh, of your question there, Oscar, but just to clarify, the watch time hours on achievements gives you total watch time. Uh, it's probably best if I just quickly demonstrate this on screen. Uh, so um, if I go to achievements here, it's telling me here that my watch time is two is two hundred and fifty thousand hours total. But when you're aiming for 
the uh, watch time requirements for monetization. It's 4,000 hours of watch time over 12 months, the last 12 months. We've done a couple of videos about this actually, uh, so make sure to check them out about how watch time works for monetization. It's the watch time you've earned over the last 12 months. So you wanna be looking at the real time stats bar on vidIQ, which is this little blue thing in the top here. If you've got less than 4,000 hours of watch time, that will show you what your watch time is over the last 12 months, and it'll probably be in amber to guide you through that process. So use that analytic rather than the achievements analytic for reaching that specific target of monetization. All right, got any more questions? Uh, and I'm gonna try and do a quick fire round here. How long is a reply for monetization it takes? Changes for every single channel, I'm afraid, love zone tips. It can take uh, as quickly as 10 days, but for some people it's taken months because they go into a review, and uh, unfortunately there is no uh, good answer for you there. It's a big topic, and we cover it uh, frequently on vidIQ, so make sure to check out uh, any updates that we have. Uh, Veronix, uh, yes, we're going to do some more channel audits after this Q&A. Any recommendations for breaking into a beauty channel industry? Uh, so the uh, things that you will need to really concentrate on is super strong thumbnails. Take a look at the uh, biggest YouTubers and how awesome their thumbnails are. They're probably spending as long on their thumbnails as they are on their content. And try and identify a, very, a particular niche in the area of beauty. Maybe it's foundation. Maybe it's uh, concealers. Maybe it's particular... Uh, I'm really struggling now with beauty references because I don't know anything about the subjects. But yeah, you will know the real key hot trending areas and try and focus on those areas. Maybe try and not be too broad. It's a really competitive and saturated market. So yeah, it's a bit like Fortnite. You have to find your own little corner and build your audience uh, from there. Uh, chicken fried barbecue. Do you delete videos from customers? No, vidIQ would never do that. Why would we want to do that? That's definitely something our tool does not do. Uh, Alex uh, Cambio plays games, wants to wrestle me for one of the championship belts. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've got a pay-per-view here on vidIQ at the end of the month, and it's called um, Subscriber Brawl. So if you do want to challenge me for the title, uh, make sure to join me, join me there. Panther, how to write a script for better audience retention. I think it just comes with practice. I mean, I used to write scripts all the time, and now I'm trying to go the other way. I want to try and be more authentic and natural on camera. So I am uh, not using scriptures much. I think the important thing to understand about trying to increase audience retention is trying to keep the audience interested for longer, which actually means, ironically, maybe faster, um, shorter clips. So try and maybe switch the camera angle or switch the topic or or something to keep the audience engaged with your content every 10 to 15 seconds. That's uh, uh, the thing that I've been really experimenting recently with in the last uh, few months. All right, folks. Whew, that was a pretty wild and wonderful uh, questions, uh, any questions asked segment. But what we're going to do now is go back into channel audits. But this time, we're going to do a quick fire round uh, to finish off the show. So quick file audits. Let's do this. Yeah, we're going to look at some channels very quickly now. The first one we are going to look at in the quick fire round is Namaycha. I do confess I don't know how to pronounce uh, your channel name I love the channel ban it's really uh, graphically strong uh, in, it's definitely about gaming we can see something from God of War in a South Park uh, style we've also got some Minecraft stuff there and your um, thumbnails are uh, well done what I would say is that uh, the text is difficult to read so if I just use my magnifying glass uh, some things are very difficult to follow here in your text, some of these speech bubbles, like in this one in particular, there's a lot of text there, very difficult to read. So I simplify things on your thumbnails. There's a lot going on uh, in your thumbnails. I think this one, for example, is a, a quite a strong a thumbnail. It's relatively simple uh, in terms of what we see on uh, the thumbnail, and it's very strong in terms of its uh, appearance to the viewer. And there is some... Uh, 
some themes going on here with stick men and a bit of memeing going on. But yeah, what is the channel about? It seems to be about gaming in a loose sense, but we got stuff about the Avengers Endgame and then um, uh, when a neighbor neighbor's kid tries to steal your video games. It's around the video game area. Is it about memes or is it pranks or is it about Let's Play? That's what I'm not particularly picking up too strongly. Uh, you have 270 subscribers and some videos are performing a lot better than others. This recent one got 300 views, but then his, uh, this one here's got 500 views, but then others are in double digits. So yeah, look at your content and see what's really resonating with your audience and focus on those videos. Uh, so Veroxus, Verox you asked us if we were going to do some channel audits. Uh, so we're now auditing your channel. Uh, I guess the question I would ask is, what is it about? we looking at... Videos about uh, kids raging and then Minecraft PvP. Uh, it looked like you were doing a couple of months ago. Now we've got some MV Emerald. See, I guess as a as a somebody who's not really into the, the gaming area that you're talking about here, MV Emerald 32x combo montage. Is that about Minecraft? If it is about Minecraft, then certainly include that or some imagery or a reference in the keywords, so that I definitely know what you're talking about. I mean, they're doing very well here. These last few videos are getting hundreds of views, so you're reaching a wider audience, so you're definitely starting to find your audience, and these emerald, sapphire, jewel reference videos seem to be doing very well, so double down on that content, certainly. Maybe just include some stronger keywords and some referencing in your titling to help you... Um, with discoverability on those videos. But in terms of the growth that you've had in the last couple of days and weeks, looks pretty strong to me. Uh, uh, one that we see uh, like every couple of months, the Cruisy Ways Jays, you are now approaching uh, 3,000 subscribers, still uh, tackling the Pokemon Superhero YouTube series. So I like your channel focus. The thumbnails are generally good here, it seems like. I know you've been uh, trying to improve your thumbnails recently. and looks as if you've taken a break as well. So yeah, that's I guess that's the first thing. You've taken a three-month break, so it's going to take a little while to get back into uh, your YouTubing prowess, I, I, I guess. And still some uh, work to be done here. Um, in terms of the content... Uh, is, is this works that your is this uh, content that you're producing or is it on a video game? Um, I might need to know that a little bit more in the thumbnails. Uh, but Pokemon is definitely the keyword that you're using. Maybe leaves a bit of a text again. There's still perhaps a bit too much text on some of these. You got some trailers going on as well, so I guess you're building up to a big release. Make sure you. Um, Promote, promote that uh, strongly, especially in the community tab and wherever else you, you do have this. Oh, so, yeah, using the community tab as well, which is good. So continue what you're doing and maybe just continue to tweak the thumbnails a little bit there. Edgy Machine. I think this channel is about, uh, let's see, CSGO, Counter-Strike. Some very strong looking thumbnails here and you have had some success in certain videos, like these ones here, where it talks about knives for $100, gloves for $100. Sound looks like you had particular success when the very focus of your videos is about how to get an item for $100 in the game. That's like such a super niche area, but the views are telling you that these are, your, these are some of your most popular videos. So I would try and double down uh, on that content. It looks as if you are. It looks as if you are focusing on how to get items cheaply on CSGO, which seems to be a good area for you. So I think you've got your channel focused down. Thumbnails are very strong. I just keep plugging away at that particular uh, topic. And it's almost like these particular thumbnails where it's really strong with the text and the, the, the value of it being cheap really helped. Uh, but you've also got a very good video here as well for 22,000 views of opening a item. So items, unboxing, loot, secrets, that's certainly where you seem to have the most success uh, for your channel. Next one is CNWH Clan. I gotta be honest, I haven't got a clue what this channel is about yet. Looks as if it's about TikTok memes, maybe, on Fortnite. If it is, I think your channel banner needs to change to represent that. 
would help. But Fortnite seems to be certainly where you are at. It's just a very competitive area, Fortnite. So how can you differentiate yourself from the rest of the crowd? It's a difficult question, but it's something you need to uh, really dive deep into uh, to um, uh, find out. Some, some strong thumbnails here, though, that I can see. But yeah, with Fortnite, you need to find that that special thing that's really going to kickstart your channel. I don't. I know we say this a lot, a lot, but uh, and it's difficult. Absolutely, gamers. We have so many gaming channels that we audit, which means that there's a lot of competition. So finding your special area of Fortnite is going to be where it's at. Game Passion uh, FR. I think this is a French channel, from what I can see uh, through the uh, language. I think very basically what I would say is that from your thumbnails, you're taking uh, screenshots from the video from your game playing. And it needs to be a little bit stronger than that because, as you can see, they don't really reflect well in the thumbnails. Like this one's barely edible. Very, uh, barely edible, what I'm talking about. Barely viewable because of the muddy screen that we can see here. So definitely spend some time working on your thumbnails. And also channel focus. If we look at your last few videos... Ratchet and Clank, Mafia 2, Ratchet and Clank, Ratchet and Clank, Mafia, Ratchet and Clank. So you, you it looks as if you're focusing on Ratchet and Clank, but then you occasionally bring in videos on Mafia. What is your channel focus? But beyond that, thumbnails. I think definitely you need to uh, work on some thumbnails. Uh, Andre Arakotomalala. I'm going to try that uh, pronunciation again. I hope I've got it right. 200 subscribers for you. Um, looking at your channel, looks as if it's a travel vlog. Some some good thumbnails, some not so good thumbnails, I would suggest. Because like in this channel trailer, it seems a little bit basic. Looks a bit like a PowerPoint presentation. Whereas this one, it's really strong. But have you cut out the top of your text there? It's one of those where I would, if you take these thumbnails and um, mix them up with lots of other channels, would you be able to then pick your thumbnails out uh, against other channels. And I think that's a difficult to uh, say. So I think consistency and branding on your thumbnails. Your vlogs and laughter. It uh, looks as if it's a comedy channel, which is uh, good. Uh, so you need to be maybe checking out the trending uh, topics. It looks as if you've done a couple of... Uh, videos on uh, the playoffs of the NFL. So that may be uh, something uh, that you could focus on in your upcoming videos. And yes, we were looking at Techlin. I saw you posted it uh, much earlier on in the live stream. Uh, your channel has 120 subscribers and you're working on memes and things. And you're definitely one who's going to be strong about Article 13 and making sure that doesn't impact your channel. Absolutely. If you don't know what Article 13 is, Google it now, folks. It is so important uh, that we need to uh, make sure that this doesn't affect uh, the YouTube environment and video creators on the whole. Uh, so yeah, you're using you're sort of reusing content, but reusing content in a fair use way. It's always going to be one of those where you're trying to find um, trending topics. So you've just got to stay stay on top of anything hot and new on the internet, and making sure that you can add something new and valuable to that content, like you tried to do with Will Smith and the that's hot uh, means. But it was only 11 seconds. Maybe you could have done a compilation of those memes and maybe created some of your own as well. Folks, that is the first uh, live stream of the year for vidIQ. I uh, just want to apologize for a couple of things there. Uh, we had terrible audio issues with Jeremy, who could not say a single word, and anybody could hear him, so we lost him. And uh, it looks as if I dropped out for about a minute there. Uh, rest assured, this is my uh, first time back in the live streaming environment for 2019, and there's always gremlins that I'm going to try and uh, get rid of uh, for the next live stream. It's been an honor, as always, for you spending your time here in uh, the vidIQ universe and thank you to Primate Games who has a, a posted here a two pound uh, super chat and you use a certificate today today awesome if you have and you've put it out on Twitter I will definitely uh, retweet it and share it with our audience folks if you want to say uh, goodbye in the next five minutes uh, next few minutes I will definitely do a shout out uh, for you if you have submitted your channel for review this week i do apologize if we've not been able to cover it we get 
hundreds of submissions uh, basically on a weekly basis. We've had 58 submissions, so we can't audit every single channel every single week. But I try my best to not audit the um, channels more than once. And if you are continuing to appear on the live streams every single week, then I try and bump you up the list if I can. Uh, and if we haven't audited your channel, don't forget that you have the 24-7 channel audit service from vidIQ, which I can quickly show you here. Uh, if you click on, so this is just above achievements. If you click the channel audit tool, it will give you a breakdown of many of the things that we've been talking about on vidIQ today, such as a, a channel health snapshot, like how well is your channel doing, uh, content to double down on, like what's gaining the most subscribers. And if my internet was working any faster, it would be uh, wonderful to show you all of the different aspects of the tool. But we're, it's going very slowly uh, today. But yeah, I assure you on your own computer, uh, when we're not trying to uh, live stream, it is super fast and it gives you all sorts of uh, awesome stuff for your channel. So do make sure to check it out. I want to say goodbye to the following people. That is uh, Christian's Creative Creations. Well, that's a, a very illiterate, um, alliteration username. Good guy, Kaiser. Goodbye to you. Happy Playground. The next stream is this time next week, 11 a.m. PST. Peep this out. A good bye to you. Miss Marzipan, we do stream every single week uh, unless there is a holiday or we are away at a conference, but we are here next week. Alex uh, Camino plays games. Goodbye to you. Carolina S. Bertrand, goodbye to you. Uh, Mason Animations, you just got your shout out. Saunders Tech, The Daily SMMR, Chris, the YouTube critic, King Wolf, The Gun Snob, uh, uh, King, uh, sorry, not King Wolf, I've already said that. Panther, Broken Black, uh, Men in Influence, uh, Doc, Dr. Uh, wow, there's some usernames here which are just impossible to pronounce. Dr. Maya Mainzing, have I pronounced that right? Wu Delot. Every one of you, thank you for joining vidIQ. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button for this video. It is really much appreciated. As always, enjoy the rest of your video making day and we will see you next week. Bye for